Australia against Wales, or as I'm affectionately calling it, the Basket Case Bowl. So this week it's uh, the Basket Case Bowl 2 Electric Boogaloo. Let's go. Uh, I call it the Basket Case Bowl because of the, as, I, as I've mentioned a few times, the horrific job that the Australian and Welsh rugby unions have managed to make of proud rugby nations done their very best to try and grind it into dust. Uh, but these players and coaches are doing their very best to try and bring them out of the, the darkness. I think there was probably a little bit more light for Australia than there was for Wales. Uh, let's have a look at the teams. Your thoughts in the comments down below. Please hit subscribe on the channel. I would love it if you would and uh, give the video a thumbs up to the uh, Australian team. Slipper is skipper once again. Liam Wright with a shoulder injury. That's a shame for him. He was I thought he was really good last week, uh, but not a bad man to fall back on as you skip. Do you know one thing I'd completely forgotten about just as I was thinking about this team? And it's maybe a credit to Isaac Kel Kalea having a good job is Angus Bell, one of the best loose head props in the world, still out injured. Um, James Slipper just <laughs> still going. Uh, front five is the same. The back row has been tweaked because of Liam Wright's injury. Bobby V moves to six and Charlie, Charlie Kale comes in at number eight. Back line, well, as you were. The bench, there's a change. Nick White and Ben Donaldson, two halfbacks on the bench. Quite interesting, that one. So I think Tom Liner he did all right when he came on, didn't he? I think Tom Liner may have a knock. I don't know that for certain, but it's quite interesting. They seem to be going with club teammates. White and Donaldson played together and uh, McDermott and Liner played together. So is that well, that would be quite a shrewd way to try and build a bit of cohesiveness in a new group of players from Joe Schmidt. So interesting. And Josh Nasser in for a potential debut off the bench. Don't know a lot about him, if I'm perfectly honest. But that is the case for much of Wales and Australia's teams to casual international rugby followers, people who don't watch loads of Welsh regional rugby or Australian super rugby. There's a lot of players who won't be especially familiar. Which just is, That's just where these two teams are at right now. Just one thing on uh, Taniela Tupo. How massive is that guy? I mean, he's always been big, but he's got bigger, hasn't he? I was watching clips of the game again from the other, from uh, last weekend. He's got bigger. I think is that that's a deliberate shift. It's not just that he's been piling on a few uh, unwanted kgs, is it? It seems like a proactive choice because he's slightly less mobile around the park, but destructive at scrum time. I wonder if that's a proactive choice. I mean, I would always want my props win that scrum. In fact, and if you can dominate that scrum first, then everything else is a bonus. Are you listening, England? Um, so yeah, Taniela Tupo was um, was a big positive from last week. I mean, yeah, Joe Schmidt got a win. Seems to have fired up these guys, motivated them. They've got a lot of good Australian qualified players who aren't in this squad through availability or selection. And with this young and relatively inexperienced bunch, so far so good. The context being, they're playing Wales, so you cannot totally judge where they're at. I will um, have a look at Wales. Just to jump back, thank you to New Zealand do this as well, and Australia, and South Africa, and England, and Scotland. Everyone basically does the nice, I mean, Australia do the conventional 1 to 15 numbering system. In fact, 1 to 23, top to bottom 20 numbering system. How do, how boring is that? Can't you mix it up? Can't you put like your 9 and 10 at the top and then your, your front row at the bottom? Just do something like England. Just do something. Bit, no, I'm joking. Um, but they, they, they do it in these nice, narrow pictures that make it really handy for me. Whereas Wales, look at that. Big square. I mean, yeah, we've got the pictures of everyone, but you have to squint to read it. So... Uh, there you go. What's the news for Wales? No Aaron Wainwright. One of the few positives for Wales in what has been a dire period for them. But one of the real bright spots for Wales. And yeah, he's not in. So the back row is Botham, Raffel, Plumtree. Good players. And Tommy Raffel has been exceptional for the last couple of years. One of the best sevens in world rugby. But you look at that back row and 
Falatel, Warburton, Tipperick, Lydia, names like that seem a long, long time ago now, don't they? Things have changed, and that is just symptomatic of where Wales are at. Cam Winnett back in at fullback in the back line with Hathaway dropping out. Liam Williams shifting to the wing. Fine. We'll go into a little bit more depth in a minute, just the headlines. Uh, the headline is the bench is bobbins. It's not great, is it? That bench. I see, I thought England had issues at props, which, which, which we do. Archie Griffin, I mean, fair play to him. He made, what, 20 or 26 tackles, was it, last week? And did, did his very best and looked promising. He's a young guy. He's never started a Premiership game and he's now started an international match. He's only had 12 games, I think it is, in his life at senior level. And he's tight head prop for Wales. Well, fair play to him for doing a manful job, but that is just where Wales are at right now. And Warren Gatland keeps playing players out of position and they've got maybe the form number eight in Welsh region, regional rugby back in Wales not been brought on the trip and a few other people like that as well but positives let me try and have a glass half full positives Chris Chunza and David Jenkins at second row young and high class players as well I like that and they can sort some of the things that weren't great last week out the line out they can sort and Wales can win no question Wales can win this one. Absolutely no doubt in my mind. Um, also, a positive, Mason Grady's come under a little bit of flack and admittedly doesn't look a totally natural 12. And I understand why people are suggesting he should maybe be on the wing and not, not at inside centre because that's not his natural position. I get it. But I'm just going to remind you, Jamie Roberts... Jamie Roberts also was not a 12 when he was moved to 12 by Warren Gatland. He was playing fullback. He was moved to 12 and he was a revelation. Mason Grady's young and he's got time. And I think that Jamie Roberts, is that, that's, what, that's what Warren Gatland is searching for. Whether he's going to find it in Mason Grady remains to be seen, but I'm willing to give it a little bit more time because he's done it before. But on the flip side, that also just highlights that Warren Gatland seems to be going back to things that he's done in the past. And I don't want to say he's past it because I, I don't believe Warren Gatland is. But does he need other coaches around him that are, that are going to spark a little bit of evolution in the way that Wales play? And the fact that Warren Gatland is, seems to be playing quite a simplistic game plan that he's always played with Wales... And people were looking forward to what Wayne Pivak moving that on a little bit. There were, there's been glimpses where it looked like Warren Gatland was going to move it on, but actually he seems to be going back into his way. I, I, I don't know. And also um, a positive, whilst you know Ben Thomas got his first start at, at, and, and was at 10 last week, Costello I thought looked really good coming off the bench. And, um, and he, he's, on the, he's on the bench once again. In fact, sorry, I've, there, there is the bench for you. Corey Hill in 2024. <laughs> who'd have thought it um, there you go there's your Welsh team tell me what you think in the comments down below as for a combined selection that's what I've gone with uh, split four and four with, with, with the pack split four and three with, with the backs I, I think Australia will win this one I think they'll win by six points there's seven points but I think Wales absolutely can win they've got really good players well they've got some really good players I'm just I'm glad these two teams are playing each other because they're they're well matched right now that's uh, that's, that's the diplomatic way of saying they've both got issues and they're well matched I hope it's a good game and I want both of these teams to get a lot lot better so hopefully this is another step on that journey Thank you very much for your support on the channel. Really appreciate it. Um, it's awful here in Durban, as you can see. Absolutely terrible. It's uh, awful. So, um, yeah, from the South African winter, uh, I will see you on the next video.